Hi, I'm Jesse Voicy with Brunson Instrument Company, and what I'm going to demonstrate today is how our alignment fixture works with the Climax two and a quarter inch boring bars. I'll explain to you here the features of this, and then we'll move into the installation of this on the bearing itself and how to properly mount the scope in order to do an alignment process. The features of this alignment fixture are these four adjustment screws, is what we call them, and the purpose and the job of those adjustment screws is to direct the crosshairs of the scope itself and the bearing in a vertical orientation and a horizontal orientation or X and Y. There is a safety strap here that you can see and the design behind that is to do a couple of things. It's to number one position the scope in the proper orientation so that your reticle pattern meaning your crosshairs is in the vertical orientation and matches the cross that you can see here represented by the tangent screws. Also, the safety strap allows you to vertically mount the scope without the scope falling out. So, that covers those four components. The wing lock features are designed to be toolless, and the point behind those is that with a couple of adjustments, you'll be able to securely fasten this fixture onto the Climax boring bar spherical bearing. So, what we're going to do here is make sure that you have a little bit of play in this fixture itself. And then we're going to slide it over the bearing. You'll see that when this is properly installed, the saddle is going to face up. The split that happens in the alignment bearing itself, I'm sorry, the alignment fixture, is about at a 45 degree angle relative to that being it horizontal. This would be the most common way people would expect to use it. However, if it is used in this orientation, it's going to not allow for easy adjustment, meaning in the vertical orientations and in the horizontal axis. So, position that so that you have a vertical and a lower in a straight line. And then from here, you're going to just make a couple of quick adjustments to get it to where, after you've got it on there, it doesn't take much before the alignment fixture no longer wants to come off. So what we're going to do now is it properly install the 2062 alignment scope. Now you can see that this fixture is still loose on here and the scope still easily slides back and forth. Go ahead and push down the safety saddle that way if you are in the vertical orientation the scope obviously cannot fall out of the, of the fixture. From here, what we're going to do is with a couple more turns of the locking fixtures, one on each side, I'll demonstrate that the alignment scope itself can still rotate, meaning we're going to be able to orient it properly compared to how our target on the far side is going to be set up. So this allows it to still rotate freely. You do definitely, if you want to uh, work around screw holes or any other blemishes in the surface of these fixtures, it's a, a good idea to do that. But most importantly, the idea would be to try and give yourself the vertical and horizontal translation that you're looking for. So now, I basically, just by using my eye, will line that up so that I've got that orientation. With a couple extra turns of these wing locks, I'll now have the scope to where I am no longer able to pull the scope out, yet I can still focus my focus knob. From here, it's basically a simple translation using these. If you want to move up and down, you're going to work these screws in opposite orientation of each other, meaning as I tighten this, uh, the top screw, if you will, adjustment screw, I'm going to loosen the bottom one. The reason for doing that, as you can see on the camera probably, the scope itself is starting to tilt up. Why you want to be able to loosen this one at the same time you're tightening that is if you're tightening them both or you leave them tight, you're going to work against each other. So it's very important that you loosen one screw while you tighten the other. Now, to direct the scope at your target, it is a simple process of if you've got to go right, you turn the right hand, you tighten the right handle. If you want to go left, you tighten the left handle. 
And that's the proper installation of a 2062 and a Climax boring bar. The benefits and features of the 795 SS open wire target are number one, the reticle pattern itself. It is designed so that you have known references and known distances. Therefore, when you take this target and slide it into the spherical bearing, such as the one we have here for Climax, you're able to, using the crosshairs in your scope, find out how far away you are from center. The other nice feature and benefit of this target, the 795 SS open wire, is the fact that we've designed it so that you have a known distance here, which when slid into the Climax bearing, you're able to find center of this bearing itself, meaning as the bearing is tilted, you are still rotating that center target and therefore not losing any kind of displacement. I'll quickly demonstrate how you insert this target. And now you're ready to shoot. The 509B backlight is to be utilized with any of our 395 and 795 targets. It's a more or less a white light system that backlights the reticle pattern inside your open wire targets. Here's how it goes together. This represents the same diameter of any 395 target. You simply slide together with a nice tight fit. From here, we're going to take the 509. What I have in my hands here is the DC version flashlight. Simply insert it to turn on. Turn on the flashlight, and that's the effect you get with the 509B.